All right, welcome. So if you're watching this video, it's because you're interested in what do, we, what do we need to do to build a sales team? And I'm actually interviewing from Miami at the Wind the Storm Conference, my friend Danny Kerr, the, the Breakthrough Academy out of Vancouver. These guys are doing some really neat stuff, an amazing coaching program to help business owners that are in the trades growing their business. And uh, we've had some great conversations about how we can help. We've even referred business to each other. And so, um, you know, we're in good hands when we're listening to Danny. So I have some questions for you, Danny. Sure. And so uh, the viewers here, let's just go ahead and talk about these three things. I want to know, if I'm an owner of a trade, trade company, what is it I'm looking for in building a sales team? So just give me like the top three things that I need to be thinking about or have to do to build a really good sales team. Cool, yeah. Opinion. Yeah, I mean, prior to building BTA, I probably hired about 150 sales guys a year um, for a wow. larger organization. And okay. there's a lot of work that goes into that. There's a lot of intentionality that goes into that. But I would really look for a few key things with guys. And one of the most important things was these core values. Core it's, values. It's funny, like you, you see it in so many sales guys that are just hungry for the next sale. They miss the point, which is like actually helping somebody. Um, right. I really, and I, I firmly believe this as a sales guy myself, like, the first question I'm always thinking is like, how can I help? And if I can't help that person, there's no point in even like doing any of this. And I think that there's other sales guys that think the exact opposite. How can I help myself? And so when you're interviewing or looking for a guy, look for that genuine care for people. Um, and that core value in that is so important, along with all the other core values that accompany your business. I mean, they're going to represent your company. It's me, the first interaction they're ever going to have with everyone who buys and all the people who didn't buy. So now you've got all these people who didn't buy and you have no idea that they had a bad experience because right. the did, guy didn't align with their core values and he's just pushing people away. So uh, first thing is core values, identifying that these people are just authentically want to help others, not about closing the next deal, and they're not going to, you know, even though they, the guy who wants the next deal making sales, but there's going to be some dead bodies along the way. You know, yeah. They're not going to be people who aren't going to feel help throughout the process, right? Totally. Like, if you know what your product and service is and you're passionate about it, you can sell the shit out of it, but to the right person. Right. It's just when people get desperate, they just they lose connection with what their product actually does and they just think about themselves. Good. So. Awesome. So that's a really good point. Um, what other thoughts do you have in building a sales team, looking for core values? What's, what's the next thing that you're looking for when you're trying to build a really good sales team? I think for a lot of these guys, they have to have some level of like introspection. So it's, again, it's, it's more of a, it's a personality trait built inside of somebody where they naturally can just think through like, I know where I stand in this situation and I can try and understand where this guy stands in the situation and I can like, from a bird's eye view, have an objective opinion about it. Instead of being super like defensive, like that wasn't my fault, that was so-and-so or, you know, I don't know, like that's, that's nothing to do with me. Like somebody's very open, like very just like, huh, yeah, I can see how you'd think of that way. Like explain right. more. And they're very naturally curious to want to understand why people think the way they think. They're not very like judgmental as to like this person has to be this way or I'm right or they're wrong or whatever. They're more open to possibilities. And, uh, and it really helps somebody obviously understand the customer, but it also just helps you coach and develop that person because they need to be coachable for you to be able to develop them properly. So core values of authenticity and then openness, teachability, and not blame shifters, those types of people, you know, those aren't going to be good sales guys. No. Guys who are blame shifters, guys who point the finger. Um, I could totally hear that. So these are very, really good character virtues to really pay, be paying attention to. Yeah. I mean, this it, is what we're talking about here. So, so what, what's interesting, in, and we'll talk about the third one in a second, but like, I don't look for just natural, like, does this guy have like 10 years of sales experience? I look for personality preferences that define an ability for somebody to learn to be a great sales guy. Right. I think that naturally somebody will actually have these things inside of them and you can't train those things. And if you don't have those naturally inside of them, you can't even get started with a guy. It doesn't even matter who it is. Wow, that's powerful. It's funny, like, you know, accountability is so big in sales, but if, if you have good people, they, they like love accountability. Mm -hmm. They're like, bring it because they're open, they want to grow. But the people who, uh, who when accountability starts coming in, they're like all of a sudden getting squirmy in their boots and they're shaking and, and that, you know, they're blaming some other circumstance and, and that's a good indicator that you don't have the right personality virtue trait in that salesperson, I, I would say. Um, kind of that. That's really good. Is there anything else that you think is really key to building for a trade owner, a contractor who's building a team? 
what would be important? Yeah, so the third, which is the most important one, is attainment. So it's their preference and ability to set and hit goals, which seems kind of obvious when you first think about it, but you want to like understand how this person works under their ability to set and hit goals. So do they need a high level of direction and support? Do they need structure? Do they need to be left alone a little more? Do they drive hard in the beginning and then quit at the end because it gets too hard? Or are they consistent follow through all the way through? Are they good at planning and thinking through, I have this many leads a week, I have this many quotes I need to do a week, I've got this many closings, and are they very strategically minded or are they more just cost, throw caution in the wind and hope for the best? Right. You really want someone who has a preference to set and hit goals, has an ability to take those goals, break them back into weekly little chunks, and then start to work on them week to week to get to the bigger picture. And you want to see patterns in the past where a guy has actually done that for himself, whether in his personal savings, maybe another job he's had, but he's naturally gravitated to that level of thinking versus just like, I make sales, I make dough, whatever, right? Like they, they methodically think through things because they want to hit goals and they're very driven if they're a little behind a goal. They know exactly how far they are behind or ahead and they're driven by that fact. That's really good. Wow. Thank you. And you know, that actually really speaks a lot to what our follow up power program does. It helps you get those behaviors in place. And I think, you know, we know if, if you just, instead of focusing on, hey, I want to gain, you know, 15 pounds of muscle, lose 10% body fat, and be down to 10, you know, it's not about looking at the scale or measuring your biceps every week. It's about just, you know, not, not eating the garbage and doing sets. And if you focus on the sets, and the rest will take care of itself, right? If you're, so if you focus on the behaviors, like the right qualified calls, the right amount of proposals, the right amount of follow-ups, if you do those consistently, then we can hit those goals. But if we're just thinking, hey, I don't know where I need to go. I'm just going to throw a bunch against the wall, see what sticks. I mean, if you're watching this, you probably lived it or are living it right now. And, uh, you know, if you want to build a great sales team, in recap, you got to have the right type of personality profile of uh, genuinely want to help you people. I know there's a lot more to this. Uh, but a second thing is uh, the interest in being, in, in being open and learning. And then uh, being teachable and humble, really, humility. And then finally is goal attainment and the desire and the methodical approach for achieving your goals. Is that about right? Totally, man. Totally. Well, there you go, guys. That's Danny Kerr, Breakthrough Academy. Great company out of Vancouver helping trade contractors build their business. And this is Ryan with Follow Up Power. And uh, you know us. We're a construction CRM with a sales training philosophy that helps build winning teams as well. So um, hope you enjoyed it. And See you guys.